I'm thrilled to hear what you've said, Heather. Thanks, John. I am spot on with you. Residential development will not pay for the services that it consumes. We absolutely must look with open eyes towards the commercial development. Uh, the uh, small businesses, is what I would prefer, the locally owned businesses, um, but the full array of perhaps even a big box store that, you know, we, we need places to shop. We need to keep that tax revenue here locally. But gentrification is uh, as complex as affordable housing. And there are things that this commission can and will do that might actually stimulate gentrification might actually stimulate property value increases in certain areas. For example, over in Durham, all along the proposed pathway for the light rail, uh, the commuter train, uh, those communities are already seeing property values increase. And, uh, you know, I haven't thought it through completely, but I do know that there's quite a lot that's been studied and, and written about this subject. And of course, we return to the literature and we return to the experts, probably at UNC Chapel Hill. But again, I go, to, I go to motivations. And you know, we can have a lot of smart people on the board, but it's, it's where your heart is. And um, the reason I'm quoting Reverend Barber so many times is that I was so deeply moved by my attendance at the Moral Monday events uh, last year and the year before. And um, my family, we, they left for the evening, but we, we all attended. And um, my father-in-law was arrested. Perhaps you saw photographs of him, the Uncle Sam suit. Uh, but I believe that it's no sin to be poor, but it is a sin to see our brothers and sisters in poverty and ignore them. And that's what Reverend Barber said. And so, uh, at, at, at many opportunities, we're going to have to revisit the policies that this board is considering and think about all of our citizens and how those decisions will impact uh, everyone. Thank you.